Hey guys, Chad over Kayak Bass Fishing. I am coming to you from Fish USA here in Fairview, Pennsylvania, right outside of Erie. And today we're going to talk about a inexpensive or entry level kayak versus a more expensive kayak. All right, so for the purpose of this video, the two boats that I'm gonna talk about today are the Bonafide RS-117 and the Bonafide SS-127. Now, there are a lot of other boats out there. We're starting at that thousand point price point. And basically what I'm gonna do is say, right up front, there's a lot of boats that are less expensive and you just have to decide what features, what quality, what manufacturing techniques and you know things are you willing to spend your dollars on for the purpose of this video i'm talking about a gateway or a price point boat made by the same manufacturer and what it offers versus a boat that is a little higher end and to talk about the differences and what you're paying for so i'm just going to go over my shoulder and talk about the rs117 and then i'm going to come in front and talk about the 127. so the rs117 is one of the newest offerings from bonafide kayaks the rs117 was specifically designed to target that price point that allows more anglers to purchase a premium kayak, plain and simple. So some of the things that Bonafide had to do and every manufacturer has to do to make a, a less expensive boat is to get rid of some features. Like in this case, Bonafide got rid of the front hatch uh, and went with the hatch cover that still got a nice paddle park in it, got rid of some of the deck fittings and coming on back, you don't have the removable console. You just have a console that opens up that creates a nice storage compartment and a dry spot in the center but it doesn't go all the way through the hole so therefore some of your functionality is limited now one of the things that bonafide has done is kept you know really nice foot pedals really nice tracks they've kept you know the gear track functionality but they've dropped down to a copolymer track which is a little less expensive to manufacture but the SS-127 has the metal tracks installed, give you a little bit more stiffness, a little bit more long-term durability, but you're not gonna be losing out uh, on anything with the copolymer tracks. Now, one thing that I also have to point out is this boat has more tracks on it. It has more tie-down points. It has a, more, a rigid hatch. This hatch has got the double header that, um, latches that allow you to open it from both directions. And again, some of that increased functionality. It's gonna allow you for internal storage. And so some of those features that you're paying for, you're just gonna have to decide, is it worth the money to you as an angler? For me, being able to stow my stuff inside, stick my rods in there for transport, put my net in there, put my uh, Visicarbon Pro, throw some tackle inside is a huge advantage for me and something that I'm definitely willing to pay for. Up front, I've got a pad that's super quiet for sliding my paddle under, and I've got this rubber you know, paddle keep in the front, and then same handles that they've got on the RS-117, which is pretty impressive when you consider the price point of this boat. So working on back, you're gonna have your basic traction pads, but something that's not as nice and not as comprehensive and not as well you know, designed per se as the, the traction pads and the, you know, the sound attenuation pads that come in the SS-127. Now, the other thing that you're gonna get is you're gonna get this removable console. This removable console has a scupper that goes all the way through the boat. It allows you to install your transducer on the bottom, run your cord up the back, put your head unit for your depth finder on top and put your battery on the inside, making it a self-contained unit. One of those features that is really nice, especially for a guy that travels and fishes as much as I do, wants my depth finder to be able to come off easy, take it inside, store it, go inside for updates, plug it in and do you know mapping and other functionality. So that's a real premium feature and something that as an angler, I really spend the extra money to get. Now, moving on back, one of the other things that you get with a premium fishing kayak is you get a seat that has a lot of you know functionality and versatility to it. The high rise seat on this SS-127 has got multiple seating positions going back in three different positions. It's got a high low seat, a lot more functionality and a lot more complexity to it. When you get into more complexity, you get into more cost. In addition to having the more complex seat, it also has this junk drawer underneath for stowing your gear, but making it to where you have easy access when you're out on the water. You know, coming back and looking at your RS-117, the seat is really simple. You pop it out and it clears up a spot where you can stow your stuff under the boat, but it doesn't have, you know, the same setup with the uh, junk drawer. It's basically just got an area where you can stow your stuff, but it's open to the water coming in and out. And if you drop something underneath, it's gonna roll right out your scupper. That being said, the seat is super easy to use. Hops in right there for the high position, drop it down and lock it into that position for the low, whoops, sorry. Drop it into that track for the low position. And then you've got your hooks in the back that you use to secure 
the seat into the boat. Again, really well laid out, really well thought out, and some functionality that you don't see at this price point on many boats. So coming on back, one of the other things that you're gonna get in a boat like the SS-127 is additional traction pads, additional things that are gonna make the boat quieter, that make it function better, additional tracks in the back, additional fittings for tying stuff down, and these really nice omni hooks that make it easy to lock your black pack into the back of your boat. Really easy access in the back with this uh, bona fide rear access hatch. Uh, you've got your inserts already installed for your, uh, your power pole, your motor mounts, and your other accessories that mount on the back, uh, your through hole pin for putting your rudder in there, and then of course the tuck away uh, fat grip, oversized grip in the back, dual keel, um, replaceable keel guards. And basically what you're gonna get with your RS-117 is you're gonna get that oversized handle in the back. You're gonna get your position to where you're already pre-set up, but you're gonna have to make those holes yourself. You do have the rear access, which is something huge for a boat at this price point. An oversized tank well. You don't get your Omni hooks. You don't have your tracks in the back, but you do have space to add them. So you can basically save some money on the front side and add the functionality that you want. Uh, again, you're missing the Omni hooks and this boat comes already set up with a set of 90 degree flush mount rod holders, something that's really popular, especially you know, in gateway products and boats for folks that are just getting started because pretty much you buy this paddle boat, you buy a paddle, you buy a PFD and it's ready to fish. You can add rod holders, you can add other functionality, but it's got good paddle and rod parts, great side handles, good overall design and pretty much everything that you need. What you get into when you get into a more premium boat like the SS-127 is you get a lot of those features that you want. So when you go from $9.99 to $15.99, you have to decide for yourself, are those additional features worth it? The one thing that I can tell you that I'm gonna say in this video, and I've said it in every video that I've ever talked about, the price of kayaks. Buy the kayak that you can afford. If you've gotta start with a used boat, and if you've gotta start with a boat that's just gonna get you out on the water for the time being, do that, just don't judge kayak fishing buy a crappy boat and a crappy seat if that's just the only thing that you can afford and decide that you don't wanna do it later. So it's the only thing that I would caution you against buying a cheap boat, except for the fact that it might endanger your life if you don't buy a boat that's safe enough that it's gonna keep you safe out on the water. So as long as you do your due diligence and as long as you get a decent boat, whether it's a $300 entry level boat, a $500 entry level boat, a $750 entry level boat, or if you're gonna go ahead and save up and spring for a $1,000 entry level boat, then you're gonna get what you pay for. So that's something you just have to decide up front. But I will tell you straight up, get the boat that you can afford. You can never buy yesterday. You can't get out there and go fishing a day that you lost. So that day that you lost is a day that you didn't get experience, a day that you didn't spend outdoors enjoying God's creation. And it's a day that you didn't have a chance at catching that fish of a lifetime. So I'm never gonna tell you, yeah, go ahead and miss a bunch of fishing and save up for that $3,000 kayak. I'm not gonna tell you that. What I will tell you is, the one thing that you have to consider when it comes to buying your first kayak is that when you buy a entry level boat that is really, really, really inexpensive or cheap, if you wanna call it that, you run the risk of having poor or low to no resale value. So you may invest three, four, five hundred $500 in a boat that you can't sell uh, for anywhere near that, if at all, down the road. Whereas when you get into a little bit more premium boat, like this RS-117, you're gonna have the ability at a $1,000 price point to either keep that boat forever, or if you decide you wanna to upgrade to these premium additional features, you're gonna have a boat that holds its price point. It holds its value and something that you can flip in the marketplace and keep your investment. So something to consider, definitely not a game changer, a deal breaker when it comes to me saying, get out there and get in anything you can that floats, that's, fit, that's safe and that you can catch a fish in, but it's something you need to consider. So. Guys, I'm Chad Hoover with Kayak Bass Fishing. I definitely wanted to have this conversation to talk about some of the differences, what you get and what you pay for. One of the things that you're paying for is you're paying for the R&D. You're paying for the tooling costs. You're paying for what it takes to make these innovations. But what ends up happening is, like I've talked about in past videos, a lot of that stuff starts to trickle down and you end up having cheaper boats, less expensive boats, more inexpensive boats that have those same features 
and over time, those prices come down. So I'm excited about all the innovations that are happening in our, in our sport. I enjoy pushing the upper end of what's possible in a fishing kayak, and I also enjoy the fact that that's making more things possible at the beginning, the entry level, or at the bottom, whatever you want to call it, so that this sport continues to grow, and it's open uh, to all anglers, and actually it's getting open to more and more anglers as we expand the options, expand the possibilities, and expand our horizons in this great sport of kayak fishing. You know what, guys? I'm Chad Hoover. I can't thank you enough for the support. Y'all do me a favor. Consider joining KVF so we can help you, help us, help you, help us continue to put out great content. And uh, if you haven't done so yet, visit your local pro shop. Hook up with a friend. Check out a kayak fishing partner group or a Facebook page. Hook up with some anglers. Try before you buy when you can, where you can. And uh, I promise you, if you get into kayak fishing, you won't regret it because, you know, as they say, once you go yak you never go back. <laughs> anyway, I'll see y'all in the next video.